So after 19 years, 20th Century Fox's X-Men franchise literally ends with a train wreck. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and the crazy part is that the film's finale was apparently going to take place in space, but that changed in reshoots and now, well, now it takes place in a train. Almost as good, but really not. Of course the place or setting alone isn't what makes or breaks a film, but the lackluster set piece is just another testament to the film's dull and uninspiring nature as a whole. 20th Century Fox and Brian Singer launched the X-Men franchise in 2000, and not only is it one of the longest running ones, but it's also characterized by a very varying level of quality and a timeline and continuity so messed up that it became its very own joke. They gave up a long time ago to to make them all come together in a logical way. But as long as there were some good films among them, everyone was fine with it. I watched the first entries in a very formative time of mine and the franchise accompanied me through the big half of my entire life. They had a few major disappointments like X-Men Origins Wolverine, but they also had real marvels like X2, Deadpool or Logan. And I'm even in the minority of people who thought Apocalypse was actually a lot of fun. Not really a well-structured, tight film, but silly and sometimes epic fun. Now that Disney has bought 20th Century Fox, this will be the last entry in this version of X-Men. Well, we still get Josh Boone's The New Mutants, which was actually scheduled to come out before Dark Phoenix, before it was first moved from 2018 to 2019, and now to April of 2020. But since it features a different cast and focuses on other characters, it's fair to say that Dark Phoenix is our official farewell song. Almost the endgame of X-Men. But what a terrible, and I really mean terrible, last film it is. I really wish I could say otherwise, but Dark Phoenix is a joyless and excruciating dull affair. It begins similar to Shazam, with a flashback to one of the main characters still being a child, surviving a horrendous car accident. That kid is Jean Grey, one if not the strongest mutant in the X-Men universe, and the film desperately needs to establish some kind of emotional attachment to the character, because its story is all about her and a mysterious phoenix power that will test and corrupt her. This is not the first time we see the beloved Dark Phoenix storyline from the comics adapted for the big screen. That was also the story of the third movie, X-Men The Last Stand which screenplay was co-written by Simon Kinberg. Kinberg is a veteran writer and producer responsible for many great and many not so great pop culture movies. Dark Phoenix is his debut as a director and I don't want to be mean and I'm sure there were a lot of things going on with that production, especially in light of the Disney-Fox merger going on in the background, but the direction and also the screenplay for which he solely is credited are very bad. The film has barely a story worth mentioning, nor an execution that has any vision, wit or excitement to it. People who are familiar with the source material can definitely bring more to it on their own, but I criticize it just for what it is. And as that, it's one of the worst modern superhero movies. Sophie Turner's version of Jean Grey had been introduced in X-Men Apocalypse, but I would like to say that they did a good job creating any kind of bond to the character. Her conflict in this film is solely based on the idea that she can't really control her powers and that Professor Charles Xavier, who took her in as a child, blocked some crucial traumatic experiences from her mind. The story really kicks in when our recent team of X-Men is out to space for the very first time to rescue a space shuttle. If you're a fan of the cosmic X-Men comics, don't get your hopes up. This will be the only time they are in space. And just as they go there, a huge mysterious floating cloud appears that ultimately empowers Jean Grey with ultimate power, which then leads to a death and some collateral damage, which leads to some members of the X-Men questioning the leadership and yada yada yada. There is not one single character in this that is likable and most of them act rather stupidly, especially if you keep in mind how much time they have spent together. X-Men First Class, which introduced this new team of characters, was set in 1962 and now we are in 1992, 30 years later. 
Thinking just one minute about the supposed age of our characters isn't a good idea. Just how old is Magneto supposed to be when he was a child in Auschwitz? Of course this also has been a reoccurring issue in the comics since forever and there it is kind of accepted, but in a film with real people in the roles it's a bit different. Anyway, the plausibility isn't my main issue, it's that these people after all those years should be even closer than the Avengers. To jump about 10 years from film to film could have been a cool concept, but it's not really addressed at all, let alone worked into any kind of meaningful story or even just a specific period flair. At least the last three X-Men films had some kind of connection to that time. In Dark Phoenix it's just 1992 on paper, nothing else. They even use flat screens. But to come back to the characters, Jean Grey and Cyclops have known each other for almost 10 years at this point, yet their romance doesn't come across at all. Almost all characters are completely bland here. The people we've known the longest, Charles, Eric, Hank, etc., don't get anything really new or exciting to deal with. Fassbender's Magneto, who has always been an absolute highlight of these films, has barely anything to do. His only motivation here is revenge and it's very shallow. The rather new additions like Cyclops, Storm or Nightcrawler on the other hand can't shine either because their parts are completely generic and without any emotional weight. Storm is a complete blank slate. Quicksilver has some slow motion moments early on but gets completely cut out of the picture for the finale. Now I haven't even touched on the big villain of the film and honestly without the help of IMDb I couldn't even recount the name of Jessica Chastain's character. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that her character named Vuk and the people that are with her are the most generic, tiresome and meaningless antagonists in any movie in the last 10 years. We barely learn anything about them and they never get any kind of personality throughout the film. And yet it still pissed me off how much the film took delight in murdering them in the finale. All our characters turned into barbaric killers without it getting addressed. And that in a film that is supposedly all about a central character struggling with her dark side. The story is also structured and paced in a way that feels redundant and boring and doesn't even make much sense most of the time. The plot points are so weak and the action doesn't save the film either because you've seen everything of it before. The most exciting visual idea might be a subway train emerging through the street because of Magneto's power. But the sequence it is part of is so lackluster and full of strange character choices that it doesn't hold any ground. Like I said in the very beginning, this is also extremely joyless, not only is there almost no humor to be found anywhere, the characters don't seem to share that family-like connection that is so integral to the X-Men universe. And all its gritty qualities appear just dreary and somehow it's not even able to bring across big stakes, yet at least on paper there is so much potentially going on there. Normally I always find some things I like, but I have a really hard time with this one. I guess it is watchable and if you just want to see some X-Men doing some X-Men stuff, you might enjoy it, but it brings nothing to the table. Jean Grey's progression feels completely rushed and shallow. There is very little story to begin with. Nobody seems to be in his right mind. The film has barely anything exciting going on. It has no remarkable action, no humor and the themes feel completely worn out at this point. And last but not least, the dialogue is really weak too. And there were multiple occasions where I already set the upcoming line in my head because it was that obvious. So in German I'd say, nach all den Jahren hätten die X-Men nun wirklich einen besseren Abschied verdient. Dark Phoenix präsentiert sich lustlos, uninspiriert und einfach müde runtergerasselt. I give Dark Phoenix barely 4 out of 10. It's more like 3.7. But I don't do that. And because people have asked for it, today I return my special segment of movie recommendations. Whenever a movie scores less than 6, I give you 3 better flicks. And to make it more fun and to honor the phoenix, I give you 3 great superhero movies that deal with resurrection. As well as 3 great films with bird in the title. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about X-Men Dark Phoenix. And also tell me what is your favorite X-Men film and what is your least favorite. 
You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.